Hi everyone, my name is Bobby Ba Wen. Uh, I'm from Taiwan. I'm currently a second year PhD student at MIT. I study in the ECS program, Electrical Engineering Computer Science program. But the exact topic I study is uh, theoretical neuroscience, which is pretty different from ECS. So I'm kind of the unconventional ECS students here. So this is the uh, BCS building on campus. Uh, so uh, this is where all the neuroscience research is going on. And mostly are uh, experimental group. So on the sixth floor and seventh floor, there are a lot of like mice running around and they're pretty cute. Yeah, and I usually come here to talk with other neuroscience students. And also they host a lot of uh, seminar here. They connect both the theoretical side and the experimental side. So this is probably my favorite place to study on campus. That's why we're here. So basically what I study is like, I study how brain works. And specifically, I studied how brain do unsupervised learning. So there are a lot of tests that current machine learning uh, cannot do as well as brain. And I try to tackle this area. I think for most students, uh, if you are ECS students, uh, if you are not in theory group, let's say you are the machine learning students, then you go to lab every day and then you work like um, you work until night and then you go back. But the schedule is fairly flexible. And but most of my time I actually work from home and I come here probably once a week uh, to my office to have an individual meeting with my boss. Uh, and also once a week uh, to my lab meeting to uh, either give like what I have been working on this week and then uh, to a lab. So what's interesting in the theory group is kind of like inside one lab, everyone is working on distinct projects. So unlike other science area where like people collaborate on one big project. So in theory group, like uh, everyone works on distinct projects and we kind of like share what we are doing uh, at each lab meeting. So this is data centers. This is where the uh, ECS department is and other engineering is all in this building. So this is the very famous like 3D Picasso building. I think it's fairly ugly, but yeah, I guess that's what no enjoys. So this is the launch of the theory group and you can see people discuss like some theory of computer science up there and sometimes we'll have a theory lunch here where like uh, we'll invite student speaker to give a talk on what, uh, what they're working on and also we get free food so it's quite nice. So the collaboration here really depends because mostly I feel like in theory it's mostly individual but like if like someone has some idea and then you somehow has a tool to solve it, uh, collaboration usually happens. So actually my last paper is a collaboration with a Harvard student actually because like he came to my talk uh, on some neuroscience learning algorithms and he got interested in working on it so we began to collaborate. So the most recent paper I published was is about uh, how, how to analyze like a very well known uh, neuroscience learning dynamics called uh, Oya's rule and so previously, the analysis of OYAS rule uh, is elusive until now, and we solve it up to optimally. And the way we solve it is actually by introducing a math framework into computer science, and then to solve this. So, so like, uh, and the framework is actually very powerful, so it can actually solve other open problems within the field. We are at the MIT practice room right now and music is a very important part of my life since undergrad. Before Harvard, like I was a pianist and when I came to Harvard, like um, I mean I really like classical music in general. So first like I went to Boston Symphony Orchestra, which is like a top 10 orchestra in the world like every week. 
I think Boston is an amazing city where like the student can listen to a lot of free concerts. I think like I listened to probably ten thousand dollars worth of free concert in Boston throughout the five six years that I was here. Yeah, so it's amazing. So highly recommend Boston if you want to come here. Um, and in addition to that, like uh, I realized in college that uh, piano like cannot really play with other people. It's much harder to find like chamber music and stuff. So I pick up violin. Uh, so I begin to learn violin at the um, sophomore spring. So it's been uh, three to four years now. So I really enjoy both. And so currently, I mean, music is a very huge part of my life. I practice three hours per day. And uh, last year, I picked up musical compositions. I realized that like, uh, I enjoy performing and I enjoy to listen to concert a lot. And, but I realized that um, composition is, music is about self-expression and composition gave me the most freedom to do my creative works. So yeah, like um, I think without music that my graduate life will be very boring and I'm glad that I have music to support me. So my overall experience in MIT so far is amazing. MIT is a very flexible program. As you can see, I'm in the ECS program, but like I do neuroscience. And actually, uh, the math that I'm using is coming from pure math. So even my boss doesn't understand like what math I'm using, and then she doesn't understand the neuroscience part. But like we still have a very good working and working synergy together. And you can see that like uh, it also have flexibility in terms of time. I spend a lot of time on music, doing the things that I love. So yeah, I think that uh, MIT, you can make it to be what you want. And I think that's the best part of uh, being an MIT PhD. More on like, the mentality of applying to grad school. I, I feel like um, first you need to ask yourself, like, uh, do you really want to do a PhD? Because PhD, I feel like, some people do PhD because like they want they haven't figured out their, their life and then they want to just in just like be in school again. But I think that if you don't have a topic that you are really passionate about, like it will be very painful to do a PhD. So and I think the second advice that I think also very very important is to find a topic that you are passionate at and then don't let your boss or like don't let the, your peers to pressure you to do something that you are not interested at, because like we are all pushing to the limit of a human understanding. And if you are doing something that you are not interested at, then it's gonna be very painful because pushing human understanding of knowledge is difficult. And then if you are pushing something that you are not, you don't love, then you will hate your life. Yeah. So if you like this video content, please like this video and subscribe.